Thank you very much, Minister, for taking the time to join us and a very warm welcome for your first visit here in Vietnam. To start off, can you please share with us the main purpose of your trip this time? Australia and Vietnam share many strategic and economic ties and the purpose of my visit is to highlight the importance that the Australian government places on our relationship with Vietnam, for me to meet the leaders personally and to explore ways that we can broaden and deepen and diversify this already valuable relationship. During your campaign in the 2013 Australian elections, you said in an interview, and I quote, as head ambassador, I would make trade a centerpiece of my work. Now, in terms of the trade relations with Vietnam, what are the potentials and the points of concentration? The Australian government is determined to make economic diplomacy a, a core focus of our foreign policy. Uh, just as traditional diplomacy focused on peace, so economic diplomacy focuses on prosperity. Already we have a healthy uh, two-way trading relationship, over $7 billion, but we think that there are opportunities to enhance our two-way trade and also the level of investment between our two countries. We certainly support Vietnam's involvement in the negotiations for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We believe that it will bring benefits to Vietnam. It will add to the prosperity of the region as well as to the prosperity of this country. Education is at the forefront of establishing the ties between Vietnam and Australia. How will this field develop in the coming year? We value and welcome the Vietnamese students that come to Australia to undertake studies. Currently there's about 24,500 Vietnamese students enrolled at uh, educational institutions in Australia and about 12,000 Vietnamese students enrolled in Australian universities in Vietnam. So there are many Vietnamese students who are gaining the benefits of an Australian education, Australian qualifications. What the new Australian government wishes to do is to take an opportunity to provide Australian students with the chance to study at universities in the region. It's what we call the new Colombo Plan. And I've spoken to the um, Vietnamese ministers about the possibility of Vietnam becoming one of our partner countries for the new Colombo Plan in 2015. So just as the original Colombo Plan in the 1950s and 1960s brought students to Australia, the new Colombo plan will send Australian students to the region. Vietnam and Australia have a shared interest in dealing with a number of other issues, including emerging ones such as climate change or transnational crime. Can you share some of the potentials in terms of these fields of cooperation? Yes, Australia has provided support in the past and will continue to do so uh, in the area of climate change, uh, economic sustainability and a number of programs have um, assisted uh, Vietnam tackle these issues. Uh, we also uh, are hoping to become an um, important energy supplier to Vietnam. As the country continues to grow, your energy requirements will increase and Australia is um, a world-renowned exporter of LNG, which is a lower emission form of energy. In relation to the other matter that you raised, transnational crime, I had the opportunity to visit our joint transnational crime centre in Ho Chi Minh City, and I saw firsthand the remarkable cooperation that exists between the policing authorities in Vietnam and the Australian Federal Police, who are stationed here. Together, they are cooperating on a range of um, initiatives to combat um, regional and transnational crime in people smuggling, human trafficking, drug trafficking and the uh, new frontiers of criminal behaviour in cyberspace and internet security. I was really struck by the deep level of cooperation and the, the mutual respect and trust between the uh, respective law enforcement authorities. The top level bilateral agreement as of now between Vietnam and Australia is the comprehensive partnership signed in 2009. Do you see that developing into a strategic partnership in the future? And if so, what are the steps needed in order to achieve that goal? Um, we're about to embark on um, another plan of action under the comprehensive partnership and I discussed many of the aspects of that um, today and yesterday during my visit with the relevant ministers. So I believe that um, the relationship will continue to grow as um, Vietnam continues to embrace economic reforms, as we work out 
um, more opportunities for us to cooperate uh, strategically, economically, in the area of defence and military ties, environmentally, uh, through education, tourism, trade, investment, it goes on. So it's a very strong and growing relationship. Thank you, Minister, for your time and the very best of luck for the remainder of your trip.